Kinetics in Search of Willow by Arbor Winter Barrow Part 1. When Nightmares Become Reality Chapter 1. Destiny is no matter of chance. It is a matter of choice. It is not a thing to be waited for. It is a thing to be achieved. Quote by William Jennings Bryan, American Politician if I'd known that the last normal day of my life would be spent whining and pining over a girl, I might have made some different choices. I probably would have been a little smarter about my time, a little nicer to my mother, a little more forgiving of my father. To say the least, I was not ready for what was to come. Instead, the beginning of the end began with the phone call to my friend Nick as I rode the bus on the way to school. Willow is the love of my life, I declared to him. The loud conversations and shouts from the other kids in the bus nearly drowned me out. You're 15, Eugene, Nick said. I don't think you can say that. But it's true. Who says you have to be, I don't know, 24? I said, taking a stab at his age. To know what it means to have a love of your life. I glanced out the bus window and pressed the phone close to my ear to hear over-the-road noise and the other kids shouting. Houses passed in blurs, coming into focus only when the bus stopped to pick up another kid standing on a street corner. I still hadn't gotten used to riding the bus alone. Willow lived within biking distance of the school, so she never rode the bus anymore. When we were younger, we lived on the same block and went to and from school together every day. Before the Pattersons moved a couple years ago, I had never been more than a mile from her at all times. She's mine and that's all there is to it, I said sighing. I can't imagine going on without her. Nick laughed. Nick was originally my brother's best friend. They were the same age and had gone to school together most of their lives. They parted ways when Jacob joined the Peace Corps at 19. I was 12 years old when Jacob left and Nick had quickly inserted himself into my life as sort of a substitute older brother. It didn't hurt that Nick was close enough to my parents to come and go as he pleased. I thought I could never be as good as my brother was in my parents' eyes. I felt the weight of my parents' high expectations pressing on me. Jacob was good at everything. He excelled in school and decided to skip college entirely to start working with the Peace Corps. Having an older brother figure like Nick eased some of the tension. When I was 13, I decided to run away after an argument with my parents. But Nick talked me into spending a few days with him on a trip to some universities in New York instead. When we returned home, I wasn't angry with my parents anymore. Nick was the first one to teach me how to play basketball. When he wasn't on a business trip, he came over every Saturday and played one-on-one -on -one with me, talking to me about school and life in general. He listened to my frustrations and my successes with an open ear and offered calm replies. When I was 15, I failed an exam. After beating myself up over it for hours, Nick sat me down and went over the whole thing with me. You can't change the future, but you can learn from it and do better next time, he said. He was usually the one I went to when I had important things to talk about, but he was out of town, so I had to settle for the phone. My feelings for Willow didn't come out of nowhere. I had known her for most of my life, and I'd recently started to get the warm fuzzies, as Nick liked to call them. Sure, E-Man, <laughs> he said, still laughing. I'm sure that'll last about a week. Kind of like the hissy fit you're having right now. Nick, this is serious. I knew I was whining, but I didn't care. I hunched into a ball and tried to avoid the sideways glances my classmates were giving me. Nick was having a great time at my expense. He was treating my life-changing realization like a skit on a comedy hour show. It frustrated me, but he was the only person I felt like talking to about it. The only other person I would talk to about stuff like this was Willow. But since Willow was the subject, well, I had few options. All right, let's say that, hypothetically, she's the love of your life. Then what? What's your game plan? He was still laughing, and I really wanted to reach through the phone and sock him in the jaw. I scratched at a bit of gunk on the window, taking my frustrations out on many years of grime and who knows what else. Finally, I replied. I don't know. 
she's been hanging out with that senior Harry. The nerdy football player? Yeah, I said. I'd forgotten that I'd told him about Harry. He had been at her school only a year, but already he was popular. Good with football. Good with the teachers. Good with classes. And apparently good with Willow. She'd had nothing but googly eyes for him since the honors club had gone on a camping trip over spring break a few weeks before. What, did he sing her mathematical sentence in the bleachers or something? Nick asked. I don't know. I don't see the attraction. Of course you don't. You're about as attractive as a doorknob. I ignored him and continued to scratch the bits of crusty dust off the window. My fingernail dug deeper into the gunk. Before spring break, I had planned to tell her. To let her know that I was... Well, that I really liked her. Nick had always said that it's sometimes better to go slow with things like that. Telling her that she was the love of my life might scare her off. You gotta admit, though. The girls got some class going after that oxymoron. Moron is right, I muttered. Since when did you get straight A's in all the AP classes? I finally erupted. Nick, I love this girl and she's my best friend, and I don't know what to do! I flung my one free arm out, hitting the seat in front of me with my fingers. I got more stares and a few snickers. I knew I was making a massive fool of myself. Tell her. What is she gonna say? No thanks? Yes, I said flatly. I can see that happening. And I could. Willow could be irritatingly flippant about the most serious things. I could see her laughing at my confession of love. Well, you'll never know unless you ask. I already know, I said. I didn't know what else I could say to that, but I knew that telling her right now wasn't an option. She was practically hip to hip with Harry every day. They were in three classes and a club together, and spent a lot of time at his place every few days out of the week to study. I didn't think a lot of studying was going on. I was, at that point, facing inevitable rejection. I was more willing to let the warm fuzzies quietly stew than to face Willow and get the no that I knew was waiting for me. The bus jostled roughly as it turned into the school parking lot, and I let out a breath of air. I was ready to stop talking about it. We're at school now. I'll catch you later. Don't stress, dude, Nick said reassuringly. Easier said than done. Willow was taking up more of my headspace than I could deal with at the time. Nick said goodbye and hung up, and I shoved my cell phone into my pocket. Don't stress, I said to myself. I walked off the bus into the morning sunlight, and unknowingly into the last normal day of my life. I found Willow sitting outside her first class. It was the one class we shared all semester, and it was usually the best part of my day. She was always early, reading a book or jotting down notes in her journal, and she always sat in the same place with her back to one of the big windows in the hallway. Today, the sun was out enough to catch the red strands of her hair escaping her brains. She had a cloud of light around her head, brightening up her already pale skin. It was beautiful. She was beautiful. The hallway was buzzing with kids catching up on last night's television show or talking about video games. There was even a crowd of girls bickering loudly in a corner. But all I could see was Willow. How could I not love her? She looked up from her book and smiled at me. Hey, she said. I grinned. Hi. I plopped down on the bench next to her, shooing away any betraying feelings and putting on my poker face. What you're eating? She chuckled. Something incredibly dry by an author you'll forget the second I tell you. I frowned playfully, bumped her shoulder with mine, and leaned over her shoulder to look at the page she was on. Try me. She gave me a pitying smile. Nicomachean Ethics by Aristotle. You've read that before, I said, glancing at the words on the page like I knew what the hell they meant. Yeah, I'm thinking of doing my next English paper on it. She put her bookmark into the pages and closed the book. How do you do it? AP English. She laughed. You know I like a challenge. Besides, it's fun. I don't know if that's the word I'd use for it. I leaned against the window pane and the heat from outside seeped into my back. Of course you wouldn't, and that's okay. She rested her head against the window and smiled at me. I shrugged and smiled back. 
What can I say? With your brains and my brawn, we can take over the world. Brawn? She shook her head and grinned. Are you hiding it under your hat? She lifted my cap and ruffled my hair. No brawn here. I swatted her hand away and tucked the runaway strands of black hair back under the brim of my hat. Cut your hair, you bum, she said, tucking teasily at the back of my hair. You could compete in the Rapunzel Olympics and probably win. What about you, little mermaid Einstein? I shot back. She lifted her nose at me and smiled. She always said that she hated her wild, frizzy red hair. If her mother wasn't 100% against it, Willa would probably dye it brown and cut it short. I'd give you a piece of my mind, but class is about to start and we both know it would take too long. She rolled her eyes comically at me as she tightened her brain. Noted, you pretentious ass. I shoved her arm. She stuck out her tongue and laughed. As we stood up to enter our classroom, one of the bickering girls in the corner pushed out and ran past us. All I saw was a blonde head flash by and disappear into the throng of students making their way to class. I looked at Willow, but she shrugged. Neither of us knew the girl. We took our seats in our first class, and the teacher began his instruction. Monday, as you all know, is the start of career week. On a piece of paper, I want you guys to tell me about your plans after high school. Be it college or traveling the world, anything. We'll discuss them when you guys come back on Monday. Mr. Graham walked around the room as papers rustled. I tapped the piece of paper with my pencil, but nothing was coming to mind. It's not that I didn't have plans, but the empty space in the paper was daunting. I knew anything I wrote wouldn't determine my whole life, but not a lot interested me besides hanging out with my friends and talking with Willow. I wasn't good enough at basketball to think about pursuing a scholarship or a career. My second best class was math, but I didn't want to be a mathematician. What did they do? Write equations on a dusty chalkboard and stare at it for hours? Yeah, not for me. Two more minutes, guys, Mr. Grant said, tapping his watch. I copped out in the last second. Go to college, get a degree in math, play basketball on scholarship, I wrote. I glanced over at Willow, who was smiling over her notebook. She'd fill an entire page with her plans. What was she thinking? Trying to even get to her level was impossible. I looked down at my meager sentence and sighed. I walked with Willow out into the hallway and to our next class. My class was located in the hallway past hers, so our route worked well. I hated that since high school began, Willow had been taking all the advanced and honors classes. We had few classes together. Meanwhile, she was set to leave high school with enough college credits to graduate in two years. What did your folks say about taking classes at the community college? I asked, bringing up the tail end of a conversation we had on the phone the night before. As if high school wasn't enough, she was gearing up to start taking actual college classes. It wasn't hard to feel dwarfed. They think it's a great idea. I'm probably going to start next semester. She said as she hugged her books to her chest and skipped a few feet with a smile. Pre-med still? Yep. She sighed wistfully and picked at a loose strand of her hair. What's that about? I asked, frowning. Don't you still want to be a doctor? For as long as I'd known Willow, she'd aspired to be a doctor. Sure, we went through the firemen and police stages together as children, but when the doctor stage hit, she stayed there while I moved on to action star and astronaut. She knew the Hippocratic Oath before she ever memorized her own address. If anyone was going to be a doctor, it was going to be her. Of course. Her expression brightened, and she smiled at me. It's nothing. I had another thought. Don't worry about it. Hey! Another voice interjected before I could reply to her. Harry, the nerdy football player, ran up to Willow and tugged on her brain. I looked away to hide my scowl. He could have been the poster child for tall, dark, and handsome with his sun-tanned skin and brown hair that seemed to always look perfect. I hated his guts and the way Willow looked at him with something akin to adoration. Heck, every girl in the school looked at him with adoration. But he only had eyes for Willow. Damn it. Sup, Red? Asked Harry. He didn't acknowledge me. Not that I expected him to. Harry! Willow grinned up at him. I clenched my teeth from making any remarks I could regret. I'll catch you later, I said. I moved to leave, but Willow caught my shirt sleeve. Hey, she said. She smiled, but her eyes were serious. She seemed to sense that something was wrong. 
still want to meet up after extracurriculars? I nodded and waved as I started to walk away. I had to leave before I heard any of their conversation. I didn't want to know how much of a fool I was for feeling the way I did. She paired well with Harry. The too smart, nerdy football player? Not me. The directionless idiot. I continued to my next class. Alone.